Good morning. On this, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Next Sunday, we will be back in the church as it is the first Sunday of the month. And we will be worshiping at 10 o'clock with the Holy Eucharist being celebrated and all of the uh, protocols for safety around COVID-19 will be practiced and enforced. We invite you to come if you are so comfortable being present with us in the sanctuary. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The gospel appointed for this Sunday is taken from Matthew chapter 22, beginning with the 34th verse. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So here we are in my office at St. Mark's Episcopal Church on this Sunday, still in the midst of a pandemic that is now worsening, unfortunately. And we are doing our best to continue to be faithful as Christians and as the church, and in particular, as St. Mark's Episcopal Church here in downtown Charleston. So here we are, and we hear the story of the Pharisees in an attempt to trap Jesus with his own words. So they ask him the following question. They say, teacher, which commandment in the law, in the entire Torah, which commandment is the greatest? Surely the lawyer believed that this question would trip him up that Jesus would suddenly stumble and be confused. How could Jesus choose just one commandment? But Jesus answers very clearly, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And it is at that very moment that the central teaching of Christianity was both proclaimed and established. The central teaching. If you and I know these two great commandments of Jesus to be true, how do we exist? How do we function? What do we accept? What do we support? 
how are our individual, relational, national, and communal lives affected? That is the question being asked. These commandments of Jesus, they point to three things in particular, the love of self, the love of neighbor or other, the national community, and the love of community that all together makes our lives whole and complete. What do we do knowing that? What is our call? The Lord names these great commandments within the very last week of his life. This is the last week of Christ's life in the Gospel of Matthew. It's immediately following his triumphant entry into the holy city of Jerusalem. It is, if you will, a pinnacle teaching, a summation of all of Christ's teachings that pushes beyond the boundaries of the earlier writings we heard and hear throughout the entire Old Testament. And his proclamation, above all else, says that everything, everything hangs on these words that reaches all the way back and connects to Moses, to Abraham, to Sarah, and the prophets. And Jesus is saying this right before his passion. Jesus is clear that you must begin this commandment, if you will, with the love of self. Jesus named the primary love of self that is necessary before you can love one another. Jesus knew that you cannot give away what you do not possess. This, of course, is not narcissism. It's not selfish love. It's rather a love of self that is grounded in our understanding of being created imago Deo, in the image of God. This is difficult for many of us. It's very difficult for many of us to accept the fact that we are beloved, that we are created in the image of God, to love ourselves in that very knowledge. Especially when we make our way through the world that often tells us we are not good enough. It is the danger of constantly comparing ourselves to others. And unfortunately, in the 21st century, as we know from studies, particularly of young people, on the effects of social media, on their self-image, this is not an easy thing in this time. It's very, very challenging. But if we can get to that love of self in place, and if we can foster that, if you will, in our children and grandchildren, then we begin to literally mirror the love of Jesus to our neighbors. French-born Jesuit priest and theologian Pierre Teilhard de Chardin once wrote an incredible quote that I love, and let me read it to you. He wrote, Someday after we have mastered the winds, the waves, the tide and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. Then for the second time in the history of the world, we will have discovered fire. This priest's quote points to the enormity of the task when it comes to loving God in the way in which God intends. We prayed as I opened this time together in the collect, almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity. Faith, hope, and charity. All three point to the love of neighbor, the love of other. Perhaps Jesus was encouraging us to push our thoughts of judgment, of anger, of fear, of prejudice, of anxiety, and even revenge out of our consciousness. And certainly in these days leading up 
to our national election. It is all too prevalent throughout the peoples of this land. That within the heart and mind of the Christian, there is simply no place for them. And when we are confronted by the mean-spirited, we follow the example of Jesus and project love instead. I have to believe that this is what Christ did in this very confrontation with the Pharisees. Jesus loved them. He loved them as they attempted to trap him and to persecute him. It's a high challenge and calling to live up to. The Son of God teaches that we must have a love of self to love our neighbor. And finally, Jesus anchors these teachings with the need for all of us to be part of the Christian community, the church, a greater challenge in the present day. But faithfulness to the worshiping community of faith, weekly worship and Eucharist or weekly virtual worship is what nurtures and grows the love of God in Jesus Christ within us. I am convinced that this is the only way that we become complete. It is the only way that we can love in the way that Jesus proclaimed. Let us together, especially now, be that love. Amen. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you, those you love, and those we are called to love, this day and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, and stay safe and healthy in this time. Amen.